Hey, this is Brett. Welcome back to the garage where it's a mere 102 degrees. I got the fans running because I'm burning up in here, but I wanted to get this out and share it with you. Today's video is about batteries. This is something that's a little bit dangerous in that lipo battery or lithium ion cell catches on fire. You don't want to be breathing those fumes. They're tough fires to put out at best. You can get shocked, all kinds of things. So watch this, but have an element of caution in your mind. If this is a road you want to go down and you choose to build some of these battery packs, do something like that, it's entirely on you. You can cause yourself all kinds of headaches and problems by putting batteries incorrectly into this or wiring things backwards. I take no responsibility if you hook it up wrong or you put it together and it doesn't work out for you, that's entirely on you. This is something to get educated about because there are definitely benefits there. For the right applications and with the right aircraft involved, you can get tremendous flight times, uh, great endurance out of it as long as you respect the limitations with the 18650 cell and lithium ion chemistry. They don't fly like quadcopters. They're not punchy. They don't have the burst current ratings that lithium polymer cells, but they do have advantages that I think might be worthwhile pursuing. Anyway, watch the video, leave me your thoughts and comments, like, subscribe, do all that stuff, and thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy. Folks have asked me what I use in my airplanes, and I know it's a little something unusual. I make my own 18650 re-rackable battery packs. Let's start at the beginning. Everybody's familiar with LiPo cells. LiPos are great. Why? They got a high discharge rate. You can draw all kinds of current. You can plug this into your quadcopter and hammer it for 60 amps, punch it left and right, and she'll do just fine. What's the downside of these? They're unstable to some extent. Insofar as that you'll see them when they get old, they start getting puffy. And if you puncture them, heaven forbid, they'll start a fire that's going to be pretty difficult to put out. So again, I wanted to find something safer. I'm a commercial pilot by trade, and I want something I can bring with me on the road. I feel a lot better about bringing 18650 cells. Why? These metal case cells are certainly far more durable when it comes to impacts. Now, at the same time, the drawback of them, they can't take the electrical punch that the LiPos can. The 18650s that I'm using on average, allow you to draw about 10 amps per cell out of them uh, without going outside manufacturer's design spec. And I've got plenty of different cells. Primarily these ones that I'm using now, these are uh, Samsung. Uh, look at the specs. There's a million different batteries out there and you gotta get into the manufacturing data sheets. And I can build these battery packs into all different kinds of formats. Um, a lot of folks question the weight. This is 240 grams, 2200 milliamp hours. This, ironically, is also exactly 240 milligram. Let's try that again. 240 grams. 240 grams. I, um, with my cells in my airplanes, I wrap a strap of Velcro around it. A little bit of a belt and suspenders approach, but it helps to keep the, uh, the batteries in in the event of any uh, shock or impact. The uh, cells themselves, let me pull this apart. Fairly standard. Um, they are not the button top cells. These are the uh, far more common flat top cells. Let's see if we want to focus on that. There we go, flat top cells. You'll notice that I mark the positive side. I mark that with um, a nice stripe of uh, Sharpie. In doing so, it makes it obvious, positive side versus the negative side. I also put on my battery racks, I put a, um, paint stripe, and that marks where the positive cell goes. This way I'm avoiding shorting anything out by assembling or disassembling them. Um, it's not to say you don't need to be cautious putting these together. You absolutely do. You can short this battery pack out every single time you bring a battery in or out. It's something you have to think about, something you have to be aware of, um, because otherwise you're just exposing yourself to the both the cost and the danger. My batteries, once I pull them out of the case, I have 3D printed storage for them. This is just printed out of PLA, and I put the batteries in in a way that I can convey some data about their state of charge. So for example, these batteries, say they were half charged, I might put two batteries face down, two batteries face up. Fully charge all the batteries face up, and fully discharge all the batteries face down. That gives me a little bit of information. Storage charge, what I usually do for that is two batteries face up, two batteries face down. 
and they're separated. That way I know this packs its storage. I have a cap. And just as I said that I use the uh, Velcro to wrap my batteries when they're in the battery rack, I also wrap, rack them, or wrap them when I put them in the storage cases, just like that. Nothing's coming out. That's safe, and I throw it in my bag. I've got plenty of these packs that I carry with, whether depending on the type of aircraft that I'm flying. I build them in not only the 4S1P design that I showed you here, a different 4S1P design designed for narrow-bodied airplanes, this with an XT30 connector, and then also a granddaddy 21700 case. The 21700 batteries that I'm flying um, with this, and this is for some of my larger airplanes, you know, these are nice because that's a, uh, that's a Samsung 5000 milliamp hour battery there. I don't know if you can get it and read that, but tremendous capacity uh, for model aircraft. Anyway, um, there's nothing wrong with flying with, uh, with LiPo packs. Nothing wrong at all. Um, the lithium ion cells to me just represent a better value and they bring a lot more power in terms of their dischargeability. Now, bear in mind, where does that power live? It tends to live on the backside of the power curve. Um, whereas you may be careful about discharging a LiPo battery too low, you can frequently take, and it depends again on the manufacturer's data sheet and what they tell you, you can take a lithium ion cell frequently down under three volts per cell. What you do have to be cognizant of, for example, in a 3S scenario, if you go below three volts per cell, you're down around nine volts. There's uh, certain electronics, BECs, flight controllers and whatnot. Some may have cutoffs where they don't have a boost converter and can't bring the power up. Uh, so you tend to have brownouts and that, that can be a problem, certain receivers. Um, in terms of charging, this is an Amazon special that I've been using. I carry this in my bag. I like it because it flat packs. It does charge slow. I charge on average at about 500 milliamp hours per battery. This uh, charger will display cell impedance as well as uh, total milliamp hours returned to the battery. And in doing so, during the charge, you can keep an eye on the temperature, just put your hand on it, make sure everything's good. Sure, it's a slow charge compared to how you can jam power into a lithium polymer cell. But for the benefit of stability and safety and transport, and the fact that we can replace an individual cell in a pack versus having to throw out the entire pack, I think that the lithium ion battery solution is something you may want to consider. I'll show you how the packs go to together. I buy these uh, battery racks off of, I think it's AliExpress or Alibaba. Um, they're pretty cheap, usually about um, under two bucks per, especially if you buy them in bulk. The racks themselves, if you notice, now I have painted this one white. There is a pin that's sticking up. There's a, a, an index mark. I don't know if you can really see that. It's right here under my finger. I'm just pointing right there to it. That index mark allows for this to be installed in only one orientation, say on a printed circuit board. They would have a hole where that index mark sits so you couldn't put it in backwards. Well, my joiner plate that I've created has these two cutouts here. The purpose of that is so that index mark can fit right inside that uh, cutout. A second non-painted uh, battery case here, again, 18650. The pin is up here at this corner. I don't know if you can see that. There you go, you got an angle on it. That then falls into this cutout there. These two packs, when you get everything aligned, there we are, they then sit flush, just like that. There's a cutout, and I'll pull them apart to show you. This cutout here. The purpose of that is so when everything's in position, you can join these two battery terminals together. Simultaneously on the back side, these tabs will be joined with a, a jumper wire there. And on the other side, these two will be joined with a jumper wire there. An XT, in this case XT60 connector, will be installed and you need to pay attention to the polarity on this and the polarity is marked. If you look inside of these trays, 
on the side. I don't know if I can catch the angle and get the light in there just right. But you'll see there's a, there's a positive and a negative in the plastic right there. So what you can do, get everything lined up the way you want it. Look for, there's the negative, the negative, case, negative post in this case is right here. Remember what's the point of being negative, take the pointy side there. And I would solder this in position just like that. To show you what they look like when they're finished, here you go. The back side, you can see the two jumper wires. And yeah, obviously I cover them in hot glue when they're done. Um, there we go. You can see the jumper there, the jumper there. They're separated by the 3D printed plate. On the top, you can see these two have been soldered connected together and that way bringing that into series. And then there's my XT30 connection. And again, it's soldered on. There's no wire lead, there's no strain relief. This is just a single unibody block. Um, because I'm poor at engineering and bad at planning, oftentimes I find myself using an XT60 to XT30 connector, but that's also just because most of my airplanes are singles. Um, I do have a couple of twins, but even the twins in cruise will come nowhere near the, uh, the 30 amp continuous rating of an XT30 uh, connector. Um, so that's it. You don't have to use it. It's just an option I want to put out there. You can spot weld your batteries together. There's nothing wrong with that. In spot welding the batteries, um, the only challenge you do have is you expose them to heat and uh, you know you can cook the battery and kill it while you're doing it. Um, this system has been good to me through hundreds of flights. When I first started out, this is one of my original packs. I'll show you this. I used to I used to solder the top and create my own button top cells. I no longer do that. This, I still fly these batteries because I'm too cheap to throw anything away. But um, what I do now, if you notice here, is again, on the positive terminal, I create that solder bump there, which then will make connections with the typical flat top battery. You can see it on this side as well. And on the reverse, you can see solder on one, but not on the negative end. Um, and there it is there. It's, it's the exact same thing. I'm just putting the button top on the case rather than the battery itself. That way you can use a, uh, a dead stock battery like these with no button top and they'll work just fine. Anyway, it's something to consider. Um, it's pretty amazing. Um, you get about 30 minutes of flight time in the airplanes that I'm flying, um, you know, out of these. Again, that's uh, 3,000 milliamp hour is what I'm getting out of my average 18650. Um, so yeah, I'm cruising at under five amps and that, that math jives. When you buy these, uh, what you may want to consider, oftentimes it is easy to damage the heat shrink case. Um, and if that's the case, you can also find online, it's plenty cheap to buy. This is pre-cut shrink wrap for 18650s. When you buy that, it also comes with These cap pieces, what are they? They go on top of the battery. I'll show it to you. And uh, they're pre-cut. And this is what insulates at the very top. Oh, now it's stuck in my finger. There we go. That's what insulates at the very top of the battery. Oh, let's see if it wants to. There we are. Insulates the top of the battery, keeping the, um, the case, which is the negative side of the battery, and uh, the button top, which is the positive side of the battery. This is what keeps them separate. So when any connection is brushing over that, that it doesn't temporarily short out your battery. These are just paper cutouts. They work really well. Um, it's how the batter batteries are, are manufactured and born. And like I said, um, you can buy this stuff on Amazon and that way you can clean up your batteries if you get some that are, if, if you buy ones that are used and they're dirty or if you get ones that, you know, maybe you crash and you cut some of the uh, heat shrink off of it. Um, so that's it. I'll. Uh, Probably put these up on uh, on Thingiverse or something if, if you have any interest. I don't know. Tell me what you're using for your battery solutions. I know you can build packs and people will say, oh, but what about balancing? You know, why isn't there a balancing lead on my little packs? Because I pull out every battery and I charge every battery independently through this. I can mark the impedance and write down any impedance changes. And if a battery starts cooking off, I can simply remove it from my rotation and safely toss it or recycle it somewhere. Um, 
Actually, what I usually do is end up putting a shop appliance like this. This is my little hot glue fan, and I love this guy. And uh, it uses a pair of just old 18650s, but it'll run and cool whatever it is that I'm working on. So um, tell me what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video. My name is Brett. This is Useful Warcraft. I appreciate your time. Have a great day.